This is Scott Richmond and Arnie Sherman. You're listening to What Do You Know on News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and 98.3 FM. Arnie Sherman, good morning. It's great to be here and uh, begin to enjoy summer in Montana. Love well, summer. You know, one of the great things about summer in Montana is you can get up every morning, no matter what the temperature during the day. We had 80 degrees, you know, most of this past week. But in the morning, it's always crisp and good, you know, and it's good for a, a jog or yeah. a run. And I know, again, I follow you on uh, Facebook, and I know when you're out at the airport running. Right. You know, I'm trying to get motivated to, to run. You're making good progress. Well, uh, walking. You know, walking is, is my progress. You know, and uh, normally I refrain from jogging or running in the morning just because of my long history of watching crime shows on TV and the chance that I'll find a body. You know, about 95% of the crime shows start off some guys jogging in the park and look so <laughs> there's a body there. So uh, CSI. Yeah, CSI or, or Law and Order. Always the show start out that way. And the other thing is because of the, you know, the mental image in my mind of running or jogging and the reality of it. You know, I hope when I get to the point I'm starting to run, you know, people see me out there and say, wow, look at that athlete. But in the heart of hearts, I really think they're looking at it. They're probably saying, ah, you know, <laughs> good for him. You no, know, he's finally out there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we have a good show today. We're going to focus on uh, Run Wild Missoula and the Missoula Marathon, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. And we have uh, uh, Tony Banovic with us, Banovic with us. Yeah. We have to pronounce it correctly. Who's going? Yugoslavian name. Yugoslavian name, and we're going to uh, talk about getting in, you know, running and getting to shape, and, and uh, you know, it's an activity for all ages. Sure. You know, and it's not really, you know, a, a choice between doing one thing or the other. It just should be integrated, you know, into a lifestyle. I remember, I remember a joke earlier about, would you rather be skinny or would you rather eat tacos? And the answer was, soft tacos or hard tacos, <laughs> right? You know, but we, what we really soft taco. Yeah, soft. I think you're a soft taco, you know, guy. I'm trying to figure out, you know, when I've gone into these regimes of doing this, how to make it, you know, less boring. Because you know, if you're in the summertime, it's a little bit less because you have the outside and, and the uh, na- natural beauty to look at, or some people listen to music. You know, for me, I you know, in the winter, it's a treadmill, and after about 30, 40 minutes on the treadmill, I'm yeah, thinking to tough. myself, you know, what year is this? I feel like I've been on it for so long and looking at your watch and, you know, trying to, uh, you know, make it through doing it on a daily, regular basis. So, so we're going to ask, we're going to ask uh, we a lot of questions. Yeah, ask, ask a little bit of running versus walking, you know, uh, interval training versus long distance running. Okay. Right. There's some schools of thought there on better, uh, cardiovascular, you know, workouts. how do you, pr- how as you get older, do you protect your knees and legs and, you know, and all, yeah, all of those sorts of things, you know. And then my my most important question about why, you know, people run and running is, do most people that run realize that we aren't food anymore? <laughs> you don't have to really <laughs> what run. What are they running from? <laughs> yeah, what are they running from or what are they running for? Or toward, right. You know, is it is it really almost mostly health related or has it become just part of an overall, you know, lifestyle choice? A lot of good questions there, yeah. Tony. and I can't wait to... Uh, have that conversation. Me neither. We will be back right after this with Tony Banovich from Run Wild Missoula and the Missoula Marathon. You are listening to What Do You Know, proudly supported and sponsored by Don Maddox, Glacier Sotheby's International Realty. We'll be back with Tony right after this. Okay, we are back with Tony from the Missoula Marathon. He's the race director of the Missoula Marathon, the executive director of One Run Wild Missoula, and he's our guest here in the studio. Good morning, Tony. Good morning. Pleasure to be here. Good morning, Tony. So tell us a little bit about what Run Wild Missoula is. Sure. So we're the local running club, to put it most simply. Uh, you know, we have about 1,500 members, actually a little over 1,500 members, so big membership for such a you know, sure. reasonably small community. Um you know, and so our mission is to promote running and walking for people of all ages and abilities. Uh, and we have that. We have families with small children, three, four-year-olds that come out and do some of our kid races. Up to Bob uh, Hayes, uh, who's a 90-year-old runner here in town. Wow. We've got multiple runners in our club that are in their 80s, plenty in their 70s. We just cover that whole demographic. Runners, walkers, 
people that do run, walk, run. So we've got just kind of that whole spectrum. And does it include the spectrum include uh, disabled people? Uh, um, so we, do, you know, we do have some uh, disabled participation primarily in the marathon. Mm-hmm. We've got some people that are do uh, will do hand cycle uh, uh-huh. competition that uh, that their disability, you know, obviously doesn't allow them uh, leg use, but then uh, through a specially adapted bicycle, um, in essence, they utilize their arms to pedal. Mm-hmm. Um, and this year, for the first time, I think maybe ever, we anticipate having at least one, if not two, what's called push rim wheelchair, mm-hmm. um, where they're just, it's, it's a special racing wheelchair, three wheels instead of four, and they push it with their um, hands and arms. And uh, um, yeah, we expect we'll have, we're still a little uncertain of the count, but, but we may have five to six um, hand cycle and wheelchair participants. Well, that's year. interesting. So in Run Wild, um, being a member of Run Wild Missoula, what does that entitle you to? Sure. Yeah. Great question. Because I need a lot of help, and so I'm just trying to find out. <laughs> yeah. The membership the gives me, you know, is a value added membership. Yeah. So we've got um, it's a lot of opportunities to do lots of things. We have a variety of classes. Some of them are from the very beginner classes to people that maybe never even run before. And we have we have some that are called beginning runner. We have one. That we're Most of them at. that have never run before never lived in New York City. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm well, not. yeah. So maybe we had some running, but for yeah, <laughs> for yeah, other not, reasons. Yeah, not because they were wanting to, because they had to. Um, yeah, but we have the beginning runner classes all the way up to some real advanced classes. We do a number of classes with um, for getting ready for the marathon. That's because uh, that's obviously our big right. event for the year. Um, this spring we had. I think about 350 people doing classes, which... Um, that's a lot. Yeah, it is. And many of them are free. Some of them have a some cost, but that's part of your membership. And what would be typical topics for these classes? Well, mostly it's about whether you're a beginner or advanced. It's mostly about going out and learning how to train and learning how to how to right. run and be prepared for whether it's racing or... Um, some of them, we, we have some trail classes. That the big focus is getting people out and learning about the trail system around the area. Right. Um, how to be out there and be safe on the trails. Um, being on the trails is a lot different than running down the Milwaukee Trail alongside right. the river. Sure. You know, you hit up the rattlesnake, it's a little bit different of a ball game. And so people need to learn about that, how to run uphill, how to go downhill, uh, safety, you know, with animals. Um, you know, we, we get the rattlesnake, you've got, you know, bear activity, mountain lions. And sure. How to be safe there. And, and I would um, assume there's different, uh, you know, um, strategies or techniques, for example, between someone who's, 60 years old is starting to run compared to a woman maybe who has just finished a pregnancy and she's sure, trying to right. get back in shape. There would be there would be different techniques involved in that. Yeah, about the same point, a lot of similarities. Um, so, you know, two great examples. You might have somebody that's a little bit older that decide to, for whatever reason, health, um, just to, to get active again, that maybe you're getting towards retirement, they want to get back going. Well, they got more time on their hands. Yeah, and- so they, but they've never done it before. Versus, and a woman that maybe is just, early postpartum that's trying to get back, back into shape. A lot of similarities at the same point. But yeah, there's some, some obvious differences, but just teaching people, giving them the resources and the techniques to go out. You know, running is a, such a big activity in Missoula because of the, the great outdoor, healthy, fit, active lifestyle right, that we have. Right. And running such an easy part of that. Um, and, and walking. It's so easy to make that part of that. Lifestyle. You know, a lot of Missoula is, you know, above... 35, 3,600 feet. Does the altitude play a role here compared to if you're doing it in, you know, in Boston or someplace where it's sea level? Yeah, a little bit, but not not so much. I, yeah, I grew up in Butte, um, you know, a little up over 5,000, some areas in Butte around 6,000. And um, you'd go down to sea level and and running there was always a dream. Um, you know, it was <laughs> great. Yeah. Well, I know some people come. I have about 18 stairs in my house. I know when people come from Windows. to visit from someplace that's at sea level, they go up and down the steps a few times and they can, they, they tell me they feel it. So yeah, it's a little noticeable, but you know, from a running perspective, it's not dramatic. Right. And some people may, may notice some different, but um, for all the people that come from the marathon, we, we've got about half of our field comes from out of state. And a lot of those from um, Washington, California, sure. Texas, right. Low altitude places. So, um, so a novice, let me ask you this, a novice who ha, you know, hasn't run competitively or hasn't run in a race, you know, just ran after somebody chasing him in a parking lot. Or at the airport. You know, or at the airport, you know, running or running to crab a cab. How long would it take a person to go from, you know, sedentary basically to be trained to make it through a, a, a you know, 26 uh, mile marathon? Mar- how about a half? Even a half. Or yeah. a 5K. Yeah. Um, 
So generally, we would say probably in the range of 16 to 20 weeks, which is really only four to five months. So, um, you know, that's from getting off the couch with maybe little to no experience and gradually working your way up. Now, that's not going to say you're not going to break any records right. doing that, but right. you'll you'll get through. Um, and You'll get through a full marathon? We have some people that do the full marathon that's that incredible. way. They, they come off and start from almost zero. They've never raced before, have never really done much running. Wow. And start... And it, again, I mean, it's going to be a challenge, and it's uh, um, you know, you're going to be out there a while, but you'll get through. And you know, it's on a lot of people's you know bucket list, and I always like to joke. I I ran a marathon once. It took me from 1991 to 1997, <laughs> but I got to 26 the miles. Era. But you yeah, got to, yeah. I, yeah, I got to Tony. Um, you know, with Run Wild Missoula being the way it is, and with us having the high schools, the three high schools having very robust cross country programs and you know track programs. Uh, do you see a fair amount of beginner runners year over year that are trying to like break in to Arnie's point and like start to run, or is it more advanced runners that get involved with Run Wild Missoula? Yeah, no, we see it from um, yeah the whole spectrum. We have um, and we see this especially in our uh, um, our marathon class. Usually, about forty to fifty percent will be new runners. That wow, have not, that's a lot. Have not done a uh, oh. marathon or a half marathon before, and they're getting new into it. Right. And is Missoula? known around the country as a challenging place to run in terms of like when you look at the marathon and you're attracting people from out of state is it a challenging marathon is it a you know pretty much run of the mi- not middle of the road definitely marathon? definitely not a run in the mill don't say oh no you're yeah, killing me not, scott yeah not, not a run no. of the mill but we're in missoula so it's Dayton, it's ohio special. is run of the mill yeah. <laughs> but i'm saying is it known as a an interesting kind of uh topographically environmentally type of uh, marathon? Yeah, uh, excellent question, because I think what we offer is one of the reasons we get so many people come back year after year and why, why people talk so highly about it. The course itself, from a topography standpoint, is really a pretty easy course. In the marathon, we've got one hill. It's about halfway. It's relatively challenging. Where is that hill? Relatively short. It's out on, uh, on Big Flat Road. Okay, um, sure. Yeah, between Kona Ranch and River Pines. Right. Um, it's right at about the halfway mark. And it's, it's, there's a climb, but it's it's relatively short, and it's a bit of a challenge, but that's it. I mean, that's really the, the hill on the course. And that's in the, is that in the final stretch? No, that's right in the middle. Right and in the middle. So Got people it. have plenty of time to recover after of it. They're, it's early enough in the race. They're still reasonably fresh. So it's pretty easy. Um, so that part, people like it because we, we consider it a flat and fast course. Sure. And it, and it really is. What really draws people here is just the incredible variety of what – what you get to see in one marathon. You start out in Frenchtown. You're running out through those alfalfa fields out around Frenchtown along Mullen Road. Um, you turn on Kona Ranch. You cross the Bitterroot River. You get up in the Pine Forest along Big Flat Road. You've covered two entirely different ecosystems wow. right there. Huh. You drop in. You cross the Bitterroot again at, at McClay Bridge. You work your way through Targa Range, which is the kind of a classic suburban yeah. Uh, yeah. tract, you know, small ranch style lots and whatnot, work your way into the university area and Bonner Park and finish in downtown. And we get this huge diversity of area. Yeah, it's, it really is kind of. Meanwhile, you're surrounded by mountains the whole time, right. you know, and which it's is beautiful. It's fantastic. And people love the scenery. We've got great community support. People come out, sit in their front yards, have a little barbecue, sure. pop a beer. And how many runners are you runners. expecting this year in the, as the marathon? So in the marathon itself, we'll have over 1,000. Um, in our half marathon, we'll have over 3,000, uh, around twelve to 1,300 in the 5K. We'll have about 500 kids run on Saturday. Then we have a beer run on Friday night, which is kind of our social kickoff. It's just kind All of right. free, come out and have fun. We get about five or 600 people show up for that. So the day, so, No, we do that downtown in Karis Park oh, with everything that? else. But Big Sky... Um, Brewing is, is um, they're one of our sponsors of the whole event, but they especially get tapped into Friday night. Imagine that, a beer run. Right. <laughs> so so, so uh, the date for the marathon is? The date for the marathon is Sunday, July 9th. You can still sign up and register? You can, yeah. Now, yeah. what's the registration fee to run in the race? So the registration fee right now for the marathon is $127, mm-hmm. um, $117 for the half marathon, $42 for the 5K. Um yeah, and re- online registration is available through July 5th. And then you can still What's even... What's the website address? So it's uh, MissoulaMarathon.org. Okay. Yeah, pretty simple. And um, it only costs you a buck and a half to walk from your TV to your refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. 
<laughs> but you know, but we still just like going to your refrigerator. You finish that half marathon, there will be a free Big Sky Brewing beer waiting for you. Yes, oh, that's a, that's yeah, that's good motivation. Tony, you mentioned all about how many spect or people participate, and then how many spectators are there? You know, that's an interesting question um, because it's a little sporadic. But you know, there's thousands of spectators that um, just want to watch either just on the route or watching. at Harris Park. And if you come down, you know, you hang out on the Higgins Bridge at the finish, and that bridge is lined both sides. The entire length of the bridge. Yeah, it's great. And it's, it's, pretty a, good. it's an incredible um, morning to see. But we have people all over, especially through like around Bonner Park. Um, and even out, just anywhere that you've hit the city, people that hang out and watch. We even get one of the, some of the coolest spectators, and it's a small number, but there's a couple of guys that live out on a um, big flat road. And they come out on their horses every year and huh. hang out there and wave at the runners for a while and give them a show. And it's spectacular. That's um, fantastic. And that's just a couple of guys like to go out and give give the visitors a great show. It's when you were a kid growing up, Scott, back east, the only horses you ever saw were ones that had police, police officers on top of them. <laughs> or Clydesdales. Or Clydesdales. So, Tony, you're, you're, our, our listeners can't see this, but you're a, a very fit guy and look like... Man, I thought, Arnie, you were going to say exceptionally good-looking. Well, I'll, take, I'll take fit. You're also a good-looking a a good <laughs> fellow. And it looks like you've been engaged in... Uh, you know, physical fitness for a long time. But what enticed you to become a director of an organization committed to this? Yeah, so um, you're right. I have been at this a long time. I started running. Um, I hate to say it because um, it dates me, but I actually started my uh, um, really my senior year in high school going in 1979. Wow. Um, so Is that yeah. right? You're late yeah, to so, running. So 38 <laughs> years I've been doing this, you know. So, um, yeah, it's hard to believe. But I've been involved in sport a long time. It's, it's been my passion. I spent a career as a civil engineer. Great career. I loved it. I really enjoyed what I did. But um, this opportunity came up and to finally get out and be employed in the sport. And, uh, you know, you hear about people saying, pursue your passion. And it was a great opportunity. And I jumped on it and have been having a ball. And you've been since. involved. But you had been involved prior to becoming the executive director of Run Wild Missoula. Weren't yeah. you the race director for the marathon? Um, I was actually, I was the uh, uh, the announcer for out the start and then I at see. the finish. And I had done some other things. I'd helped out and volunteered, and I'd helped out at a variety of other races locally and some other races. Um, um, our primary residence at that point was in Sanders County up in Plains and mm -hmm. had directed a few races. The up Michael there. Buffer of running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Our guest is Tony Benevic with the um, Run Wild Missoula. He's the executive director of Run Wild Missoula and the race director for the Missoula Marathon. And you are listening to What Do You Know? So, so Tony, my fear. In, in terms of getting started running again. I walk every morning two miles. I take my dog for a walk, and it's uphill and downhill and where, where Scott and I live. So, uh, you know, we get a little bit of uh, good cardio. Good but my fear is at an advancing age, you start running, and I'm going to do something to my knee, my hip, you know, and, you know, I've tried to avoid having surgery, you know, of that type, back, hip, knees. If you start at a later age and, and uh, you're not in tip-top shape, how do you avoid putting the pressure on your joints that could lead to, uh, you know, a physical problem? Sure. You know, and there's a couple of things. The first one is what you're doing right now is great. Walking is an excellent exercise. Some people, um, because of biomechanics, just running doesn't work very well for them. So walking is a great way with a lot lower impact. You can still get a good cardio workout. Right, people do power walking. I was, yeah. listening, I was listening to the U.S. Open, and Nick Price said he was going out to do his daily power walk. That yeah. He does. Yeah, so walking can be a great way to do it. If you want to do something a little more, though, there's a method called run, walk, run, where you run a little bit, walk a little bit, run a little bit, walk a bit. Well, that's the way I used to run. <laughs> well, yeah, but, it's, you know, it's a, it's a great way. Again, it really reduces that risk of injury, and it can allow you to go out and, and enjoy it and have an effort a little bit more than just walking. And we have, a, we have a whole group that trains for the marathon that way that there's about 100 people in that class. And they do that, and some of them are older, some of them are, are – um, not the traditional runner body, if, if you will. Yeah. Some and if you and me, Arnie, some, some, like you and me. No, yeah. some the, the guy <laughs> no, who always... I, was trying, I, I didn't want to go no, no, there, that's but okay. now that it's out like, there. Because yeah. I, I, you know, when I watch the New York and Boston Marathon, the guy that always wins is an Ethiopian <laughs> or something that weighs 92 pounds, <laughs> and he's not sweating after 26 miles. Or Bolt. And, yeah, Usain yeah. Bolt. Or, you know, Usain Bolt. Yeah. I don't really fit into that body type. But, but that's okay. I mean, uh, you know, any body type. That's why we say all, all ages and abilities, and that abilities in, in big part is... You know, it really doesn't matter if you've got the, the, the Kenyan body 
or the, the non-Kenyan bike. Right. There's a way to still be out and be fit and active, and whether it's running or walking or mixing the two. Is the primary motivation for, like, the 1,500 members to be fit, or is it for the competition of running, or is it, I mean... Uh, are there different motivating factors why people would participate as vigorously as, you know, beyond just being casual runners? Yeah, I think, um, I think it's all of those things. Uh, it's a, again, a great way to get outdoors and spend some time outside. It's an easy way to get healthy and fit because you throw on a pair of shoes and out the door you go. Right. You know, it doesn't require a whole lot of it's gear. It's not that expensive. It's not, not as expensive as, as some sports. Um, so it's a great way to get out and do it. It's, we certainly have the competitive people within the sport. Right, right. And that's what they're after. And um, that's where I was for, for most of the time that I was a runner. But, you know, and the, some of it is just getting out. It's a great way to, it's a great stress reliever. It's a great way to, to maintain some mental health issues. You know, so there's a lot of those moments. It is great for that. And I'm very impressed with the high school and the young right. kids that are running. Because my son did a cross country for the first couple of years, as is my other guy. And they did it to, just to keep fit. But there's a great fraternity uh, and sorority of young women and men that love to run mm -hmm. and that they do it all year round. Yeah. I mean, and, and you're hitting on, an, on another part, especially cross country at the high school level, you see it, but part of why people are part of this club and do the classes and that is the, the social and the camaraderie part. You can create this social network and these relationships of like-minded, um, healthy, active people. Sure. Um, and that's where you see like in cross country, why a lot of kids get excited about cross country, maybe not so much track, but that cross country becomes like this familial atmosphere and they're all hanging out and going well, it's for a also run. it's also a sport where depending on your level of activity men and women could be completely equal they don't have it's not always the man ahead of the woman you know or at the competitive level it is yeah but, but i'm just saying at, at, the, at the recreational, at the level, recreational fine, level. Right. absolutely at the recreational level husband wife boyfriend girlfriend yeah just just, yeah. just acquaintances they can go out and participate together regardless of that gender sure and and a lot of times age i mean you'll see in our group you'll see people in there a woman in her 20s running with a man in his 60s because they're at the same right. effort and they enjoy each other's company and it, it works and it's great. Right. So, we, we, we touched briefly on equipment. You don't need much. But is there, you know, uh, give me give me your pitch on, on running shoes. I mean, does that make a difference? Absolutely. I mean, you don't want to just throw on some, uh, you know. Moccasins. Moccasins yeah. and go running, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, so the basic thing you always want is just a good pair of, of uh, running shoes, um, not super expensive, you know, even though they're, they're a good pair is going to run you 120 to $150. Right. But depending on how much you do, those are going to last you at, at worst a few months at best, maybe a year. Um, yeah. And going in, you know, we, we advocate, you know, put in too big a plug, but one of the sponsors of the Missoula Marathon is runner's edge, their local running specialty right. store. And that's what they do. And, and it's just like you go to a bike shop because you know that they're going to dial in the bike for you. Right, you and they're going to figure out by your, your body type, your experience, your, your level of activity, exactly. what the right shoe is. Exactly. So, I mean, to get fit in that right pair of shoes, there's, there's an element of protection that is, but also they're going to be comfortable. They're going to fit you right. And you're, the last thing you want is you go out for a run and your feet hurt. Right. Because right. then you're going to be, oh, God, I hate Right. This. And what do you think about things like interval training versus long-distance training? Like for beginning runners. Yeah. You know, I think part of that is um, what's your goal and what your objectives are. I mean, if you're wanting to do a marathon, you're going to have to focus on long runs, right. endurance training. If what you're really looking at is just some basic fitness as part of an overall fitness program, some of the, the, the hit training and interval training and some of those things, it, that's a great way to work in that cardio element, build some get your heart strength, rate going, get the heart rate up. Um, you know, that's, so again, I really think it's where your motivation, what your goal is, of what you're trying to accomplish. Tony, and with Run Wild Missoula, it's not just the Missoula Marathon. There are 12 other races, right, throughout the year yeah, that yeah. you guys focus on. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we do everything from the mile up. In fact, just uh, just a week ago, um, on on Saturday the uh, 17th, we had the Missoula Mile. Okay. Yeah, that's short. Uh, it was kind of fun. I mean, just a, a shameless... Uh, um, Click back on that. Andy Drobeck, who's a local firefighter, who's one of our uh, um, longtime club members, set a Guinness World Record for the I fastest mile in, in the full, full gear. That's incredible. It how, was amazing. How fast did he go? He ran six oh eight. Six oh eight in full firefighting gear. How many pounds? So many that pounds was about twenty five pounds. And now it doesn't wow. include like the respirator type stuff, but it was the helmet, the turnout jacket, the the pants, wow. and the boots. And he cranked that. The, he broke the old record by over thirty seconds. Oh my That's god! Incredible. Crushed it. Yeah. 
So that's an example. We do that. And that's, that was just, that's kind of a fun part that ended up. And what was the best mile time in general? Just, um, 430. Yeah. So that's that's where we had some of the greyhounds, but we had people doing 15 minute miles. You call them the greyhounds? Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Cause then that's what they look like, you know, lean and mean and whip it fast. Yeah. They're cranky. So other races that you have throughout the year. So you had the Missoula mile. Yes. We got the Missoula mile. We have a couple of uh, trail races, one up on Mount Sentinel, one on Mount Jumbo. We do the Diva Day 5k, which is an all women's run in October. We have the pumpkin run in October. We do the turkey trot on Ten Spoon. Morning. Is that you guys? No, the Ten Spoon, which is now the Stripe Pig Run, is a runner's edge event. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah, but uh, um, we do also the, uh, um, uh, the we do a run in association with the Roots Festival. We have a four mile run there. Okay. We have a run right around St. Patrick's Day, which is our run for the luck of it. Um, just yeah, almost every month of the year we've got something going on. Let me ask you this: you know, we have a we have a long winter here. You know, and people That's like to true. get up in the morning. It's you know, it could be pretty frosty and cold. Do you advocate in in the winter running indoors as opposed to outdoors? And if and if and if outdoors is still equally as good or better, how do you prepare yourself so that you you're you're not affected uh, too negatively by the weather? Yeah. So um, get the right gear. Um, you know, hats, gloves, jackets, the right stuff. And in almost any condition that we'll see in Montana in the winter, yeah. you can be reasonably comfortable, if not extremely comfortable. That being said, you know, it gets icy, it can be dark a lot of time, you know, it, gets, it doesn't get light till later in the morning, it gets dark super early. Yeah, get l- lunchtime, it gets light. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so I understand <laughs> that, that, you know, people aren't as motivated to be out in the dark and in the cold. Um, and it's icy, they don't want to fall and get hurt. If what that means is you got to be in it on the treadmill, be in and on the treadmill or the elliptical trainer, whatever works for you. Right. The elliptical trainer is a good um, substitute for the treadmill. You know, yeah, yes, it is. I'm, you know, I know a lot of people have a hard time with the treadmill. Um, you know, it's not my favorite thing, but it's the way to get the run in. Um, I, you know, what I say is, I would rather see people doing something through the sure. winter than nothing. And if that means they're not going to go out and run in the icy, dark, cold, <laughs> get inside. Get in the trail. My dog no, doesn't even the, like running. Yeah. I started. Yeah. I started going on the bike. Uh, yeah. at, at the gym, the up the the upright bike, not the recumbent. And right. you get a better sh- workout. <laughs> yeah, with a better sweat. A better sweat with the upright bike than you do with the recumbent bike. Yeah, but why know, is that? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Yeah, not. But being you get a, a much better guy. sweat with the treadmill than you do with the elliptical. Um, generally, yeah, but you know, I I, I get that the that the treadmills can be hard, but you know. Like my wife, she's on the treadmill a lot. She'll plug in a, she binge watches a, right. a season of shows. So yeah, you could do that every day. She's watching, you know, that she's Breaking on. She's Bad. watching, mm-hmm. yeah, whatever. I don't think she's gotten there. She's watched a lot of crazy ones, you know. And uh, um, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah. I, I watch, your wife I, and I'm happy because I'm glad that she's watching them and not making me watch. Them. I watch Marathon Man with, <laughs> yeah. with Dustin, Dustin Hoffman. Hoffman. Dusty, yeah. Yeah. Do you, does your wife run? Yeah, she. So she's a she's a classic recreational runner that does it to stay in shape. To stay fit. She, She's married she, to a runner. She is. And, you know, she begrudgingly got involved in it, but she finds it's an easy, convenient way to stay in shape. And she does maybe two races a year just because it's every now and then she wants to challenge herself and just try it. How many miles is a 5K? 3.1 miles. So it's 3.1. point. She just called it the 3.1-er because then I can relate to it. I'm <laughs> yeah. still not on the metric yeah. system. But that's been my big – I like to run at the airport. Arnie will tell you that because it's flat and I enjoy – I don't like hills. Yeah. My knees can't handle hills. But I've never really wanted to join. I've never done a, an organized run. Why? I'm try, I, I don't know why that is. It's maybe because I like to keep it very personal and I don't want to be competitive. But, like, what would make me, like, how do I break down that barrier? Just how does go? he not feel intimidated? Yeah, by how the do fact? we not feel yeah. intimidated? Maybe that's the thing. No, yeah. that, that's great because we get a lot of that. A lot of people think, oh, God, I, you know, I'm not going to go. Last. I'll be last. Oh, I can't. I'm not a real runner. I shouldn't be here. You know, when you come out to one of our races and you see that, there's very few of the greyhounds at the front. Right. It's mostly all just the everyday recreational runner. And they want to come out and partake because it's, again, as much as anything, that sense of community. They get to come out and have a shared experience with another right. 200 or 400 or 4,000 runners, whatever that number is. Right. And it's just... Their share, shared suffering. Well, maybe, it's also it's also a, a sense of accomplishment, even if it's not absolutely. a competitive accomplishment. Yeah, that you've actually gone into a race yeah. and finished it. Yeah, I like the. I, I'll tell you, I like the endorphin thing. Yeah. I like release. That's the greatest feeling of running is just getting lost and feeling like 
you're on a you're on a high that doesn't exist elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. You know, and, and Artie mentions that sense of accomplishing. You know, one of my favorite things is watching at the marathon at the finish line, the sense of emotion that you get from people. Um, whether it's because it's they've accomplished this big goal, you have some people that are running in memory of somebody, or, or whatever the case may be, but they come across with this. You can see the emotion released when they hit the finish line, and it's just. It's amazing to see. You know? Right. Well, because it's it's a serious commitment. I mean, you just can't well, you can't have a couple of beers and pizza and decide the next day you're going to go run 13 miles. Yeah, you I mean, can. It may be a little painful, <laughs> yeah. but I wouldn't yeah. suggest it. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, Tony. So you've been with the Run Wild Missoula now for almost four years, right? No, um, three? about two, uh, approaching three, a little over two and a half. Okay. Yeah. Is it everything that you thought it would be, and then some, or what's the what's the what's the midterm report or the yeah the, you know yeah it is it's it's what um. It's what I'd hoped it would be. It's um, um, being able to be a part of getting people to live that fit, active, healthy lifestyle, which for me was I've taken for granted. I've been doing this, like I said, 38 years. I've run virtually every day for 38 years. I get up every day and the sun rises. That means I'm probably going out for a run. And that's just the way it is. And, I, and for me, again, it's kind of a kind of take that. For Have you had a knee bit. or back or My, minor things, but I'm. Obviously, I've been very fortunate. I'm a smaller yeah. guy. I've been biomechanically sound. So I've been lucky. I've had very few injuries. Sure. Um, but to be able to now help others, you know, get out and achieve the things I've seen and the experiences right. I've had is what I really um, enjoy being part of. And so, yeah, I have really enjoyed That's you know, great. my role, not just with Run Wild, but but certainly the marathon. Well, for, for our non-Missoula, you know, listeners, yeah. you know, Missoula is – one of the best outdoor towns in the United States, for sure. It is. I mean, it's, and it's been viewed and, you know, judged that way right. by lots of Men's Journal and other places. And, you know, it's it's a place where uh, um, you people move to and live here because of the outdoor activity experience. There are many, many doctors and professors at the university and other professionals who could work anywhere who have chosen to come to Missoula. So right. you have an interesting mixture in the community of a, of a more overall commitment to fitness than many other places. And I would venture to say, although there are people like me out of shape, when you're walking downtown on a typical day, you're getting in shape. Yeah. People are by and large in a lot better shape than if you go to, uh, you know, Mississippi or someplace (laughs) else where, you know, where they don't look as, as, as committed to trying to live a fit and active lifestyle. Right. And maybe that's reflected in the fact you got 1500 members. I, I think it is. Yeah. You know, and I think, uh, both things maybe kind of grew up with each other together that way. That I think the the club and the marathon came along at the right time. At the right, you know, as Malcolm Gladwell had, you know, talks about the tipping point. It was just the right that right point for that to happen. Right, um, where we were kind of symbiotic and and well, and it's not one it's beyond the other. And, and you grew up in Butte. I mean, it's beyond Missoula. There are people in Butte that are committed to that. People in Bozeman, yeah, Kalispell. I mean, because yeah. all of the outdoor sports. You know, people want. Is Montana? Be- yeah, is Montana a running state? I mean, are there? Yeah, but I, I will. Yes, it is. But I will tell you, the Missoula is exceptionally so. Okay. Um, yeah. Bozeman is probably the most similar as far as sheer volume of runners. Um, you know, Billings is by far the largest city in in Montana, without right. a doubt. I'd spent a long time there. I, I lived there for about sixteen years, and we had a nice running community, but not compared like to pales Missoula. in comparison to Missoula. Right. And when, when I go around and I talk to other. Um, race directors and club people around the country within the industry and tell them that, you know, we have 1,500 members and, oh, how big is Missoula? Oh, it's about 70,000. They're just astounded. And you, you think about that that percentage it's of an people. Amazing, it's an amazing yeah. city. Talk, talk to us a little bit about the marathon and the economic uh, impact it has on the community. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, we love to put the race on for the race itself. Right. But what we really also believe we're a big part of is is that whole economic part and being great partners with the, a lot of the local businesses. So last year, um, Destination Missoula did some some quick and dirty analysis based on our participants and where they came from, and they're looking at probably somewhere between one point eight and two million dollars wow. for the weekend, um, which is big. Which that is, is big. big. That's yeah, a big no weekend. question. I mean, the only other things I think that really approach that clearly are the Grizzly football game, sure. where we're driving tens of thousands of people to fill that stadium. But when you set that aside, I, I really think that's, you know, we're probably the the largest event and economic driver that we have in Missoula, and certainly in the summer. And, and we think that's important. That's why we finish in downtown. That's why we have everything 
starting and finishing in Karis Park so that we can create um, that part of, be part of the community and that sense of community. So is there something, Tony, you want to do with this organization that, that hasn't happened yet? Is there plans oh, for question. the future to expand it or to change? I mean, what, what's your passion in terms of building and growing the organization? Yeah. So in, in that general sense, yes, we always want to look at growing and, and making it bigger, better, better, um, whatever you want to, however you want to term it. But, you know, we'd like to see some outreach into some things that are maybe, maybe outside of the normal realm of, of a running club. Being more involved in just the general community health. Um, it, and Missoula, as healthy and active as it is, there's still a surprising amount of um, people that are um, inactive, unhealthy. Um, and with that comes a lot of, of um, health things that drive up medical costs, yeah. that, that sure. social costs become much higher. And we would love to be able to where we could be a part of driving the change in the healthcare model, where what we're doing isn't working clearly. I mean, we're seeing that at the congressional level and the presidential level right now, and this drive to change insurance and healthcare, and that that's all fine and dandy. But the fundamental issue is that we as a society are not taking care of ourselves. So if we can be a positive part of that and be part of the preventative health side right. instead of the reactive and health it, side, that well, would be so great. Well, it's a people. smart move too because, frankly, if if someone like myself is saying, well, you know, I want to start running or jogging or doing whatever – but I don't know what I need to do to make sure I don't have right. a problem. I'm not sure who I would talk to. Right. But now, you know, what you you're saying. You don't want to be intimidated. Right. 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 You don't want to be intimidated. Part. But now what you're saying is, you know, with, with education classes and other materials maybe available on your website, you could be the yeah. the focal point for a you know combination of, uh, of helping people develop an active, healthy lifestyle. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully um, as we progress and continue to mature as an organization, some of our partnerships with our local health organizations, whether that be whether that be Providence and or community um, and or some of the other. I was going to say. Yeah. Work work things to where we can help be a resource that they can utilize with their their patients and their clients to be able to come. We, we can help that out. And we know we're not the only game in town. Yeah. You know, and it's interesting. Every hospital will say what's their one, number one mission is to keep people out of the hospital. Right. Exactly. Right. And so you're part of that. Um, so economic wise, it's a, it's a big driver. Um, who are some of your partners? You mentioned that you have some new partners this year. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So within the marathon, um, our, we have a new title sponsor this year, Consumer Direct Care um, Network, which is a locally grown, locally based organization that, that, um, or entity, I should say, that, that operates in, I think they're now 13 states. Right. Um, Offering home health care su- yeah, assistance. Yeah. For a lot of different home health care things, whether it's acute care or behavioral health or disabled people. Um, Alzheimer's care, lots of those types of things. Fantastic organization. Um, some that have been with us for a long time, uh, Runner's Edge, mm-hmm. uh, Big Sky Brewing, um, Alpine Physical Therapy has been with us from the beginning. New Automotive you have? Um, yeah, Flanagan Motors is, is a new sponsor to us this year. We're thrilled to have them, Shannon Flanagan and, and, and his group. He's been, been a guest fantastic. on the show with Arnie and I. Right, and he's a yeah. great uh, community activist in yeah. many ways. Absolutely, and very progressive and sees the value of the community and yeah. how to strengthen the community. And a, and a lot of our sponsors are like that. Um, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services has come on board this year. They're a new sponsor this year that we haven't had before. Um, First Security Title or um, First Security Bank. Um, uh, and why why do they become sponsors? What do they think the value? What's the, what's a value proposition for them? For, I think it's mixed. I think some of them really just want to be part of this great community event. Yeah. Um, and some of them use it. They want to be part of the event, but it also gives them a platform to um, spread their message. Consumer Direct Care Network, I think, is a great example of that. They are really want to be involved in the community, but um, they're little people don't know as much about them. And here they've grown this 250 plus employee base right here in Missoula. Built this beautiful new building out off of Reserve Street, at, yeah. At, you know, behind Brett's RV off the interstate. They chose to stay here, right. and they want people to know more about them and what they do and what they bring to the community. Mm-hmm. And so I think we get some of that, and we get we get a little mix. It's good. Um, yeah, so we're, and we're thrilled. And which is the hospital that's involved? Is it St. Pat? So, um, no, so um, Providence Medical Group okay. is, has been a sponsor um, with us for, for several years now. Okay. Um, one of our gold level sponsors, and they do, um, they're great to work with. And um, we, you know, they have a lot of their employees get engaged and yep. participate in the events. And, and again, we hope that working with them, we can kind of spread the message of running and walking being part sure. of that healthy lifestyle and that, that, that's, uh, um, um, proactive mode instead of the reactive mode. How nice that this couple of their biggest right. partners and sponsors 
are, you know, a lot of employees, big employee organizations, because that's they can help spread the word. Well, it's also good for their own employees. If, Absolutely. You know, to get healthier and fit. You know yeah. what? Let's take a quick break. We'll right. be back with Tony from uh, Tony Banovic from the executive director of Run Wild Missoula and the race director for the Missoula Marathon. You are listening to What Do You Know? Back after this. Okay, we are back. So, Tony, Missoula is renowned and to some extent for all of the running and hiking trails that we have. You know, if you were doing a promo about that to, you know, to visitors, what would you say about our running environment in, in, in Missoula? Yeah, you know, especially if you're a trail runner, the ability to virtually walk out your back door and within minutes be in trails and as you head up into the rattlesnake, you know, into wilderness within literally minutes of leaving your back door. So incredible um, array of trail network that exists now. Um, one of the things we're really excited about is we have partnered up with Five Valleys Land Trust, and they're working on some acquisition to make a bunch of land available to the public up on Mount Dean Stone, thousands of acres. It'll, it'll really help reshape our opportunities for recreation, whether that be Walking, running, hiking, biking, hunting, uh, working to still preserve that up there. Mm. What a, you know, just what a great opportunity. And just, again, from outside the back door, it's not like some communities where you have to go and you drive for half an hour and you get to it. Well, think trail. about city. You know, cities in America. You know, that where where there aren't running trails, or you go to the you go to Central Park. Yeah. You know, and you got one place mm. to run, and you're always running here. We have, what, hundreds of miles of hundreds running? Hundreds of miles. Hundreds you, of miles of running trail. Yeah. Let's ask Tony. Let's put Tony on the spot. Tony, places around the United States, what's your favorite city to run in? My favorite? Oh, man. That is that is putting me on the spot, man, because I've run in a lot of them. Um, well, if you were going to go back to one, which one would you go back I would to? go back to one. You know, I I love running in Washington, D.C. Yeah, well, really? you got all of the history. The history. It's so the spectacular. The Marine Corps Marathon? To run, just, to, just in Washington, D.C. In D.C. Just, okay. just to run around the mall and the, all the monuments. And um, I've had some morning runs out there. I remember one a couple of years ago, and it was not long after the Korean War Memorial had opened. Yeah, sure. And did an early morning run and came up into there. And it was just, I mean, it was just a little bit eerie. There was not, not many people around. And it was just quiet. Yeah, when you go through the but, Vietnam or the Korean or World War II memorials, it's almost... Yeah. spiritual in a it, way. It's, it just has, a, and I think it's that sense of history that Washington, D.C. has and the ability to be there and, and see it all right. Well, you can have the history, and then also you can run You can run along the the water. I mean, you got yeah. the Potomac River. There's I was going to ask runs. him, what's your favorite uh, coastal? My Co- favorite coastal. Um, run. My favorite coastal run. Um, boy, you know, it, and I guess I'll sort of count this as United States because they're, <laughs> they're a territory. Um, I did a run in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Is that right? That there's an old fort there that I oh, was yeah. actually up on the parapet and running around the edge of the fort, and it was incredible. And it was just, yeah, that was a kind of an unexpected thing that I well, got to do. Well, how does that affect you? I mean, you run here, it's pretty crisp, and uh, we're pretty dry. We don't have a lot of humidity. What happens when you go to a place like Puerto Rico where it's like 70 or 80% humidity? Yeah, you sweat. You sweat yeah, you bunch. Yeah. yeah, you're a pig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You better have water so, with you, right? Yeah, that's you the way it is. You just, yeah. But you go out and you take that, and that's one of the things I love about running is I have run in places around the world, and virtually anywhere I've gone, I've been able to go out and run and experience things that most people don't get to yeah. because they don't get far enough off that beaten track. What's right. your favorite international city to run in? Um, oh, gosh. Uh, Paris um, was spectacular. Yeah, how do you not, how do you not um, like along Paris? Along the Seine, I had an early morning run one time up the Champs-Élysées and through the Arc de Triomphe that was spectacular, Notre Dame. Um, I had a run, uh, again, in the morning. Morning runs seem to be special for some Better. Reason. But um, in Arusha, Tanzania, and a little uh, young boy who's maybe 12 and is literally like J.C. Penny loafers, um, ran eight miles with me. Just jumped wow! In. <laughs> Went for it. Was, it was I was like, what the heck? Um, yeah, it was. So I, I've just been fortunate. That's, I, that's one of the things I personally love about running is where it's taken me and where I've got to run and what I've got sure. to experience. Well, you know, it's yeah. even, you know, a lot of people play golf because they like to go to different golf courses and see the different terrain, the layouts. Right. But in running, you can go from, you know, mountains to oceanfront to cities. Yeah. To, you know, running with history, as you pointed out. I remember the one, uh, the movie about Ali, where he's running in Africa and all of a sudden there's oh, a whole kids. entourage of kids running with him. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's going down these dusty roads. I mean... All of that is you. You can really experience geography and history at the same time by yeah. running in all of these different venues. You can. Tony, two two minutes left. Quickly, 
from a security standpoint, do we have have we put in stronger security measures with the marathon? I don't know why I'm asking this now. Sure, but, yeah, no, but it's, a, it's a great thinking question. about Boston when yeah. you were talking about that. Yeah, it's always something in the back of our minds, um, and we've worked with our um, local law enforcement, especially the um, city of Missoula Police Department. Sure, um, and there's some things, um, some of which we don't talk much about, but that they've helped with to to try to have an enhanced presence that some's visible, some's not. So that we can right. um, do that, we try to always consider it. Um, heaven forbid something were to happen, um, we've talked through it a little bit so that we we know some basic actions to take. Um, yeah, we we would hope that would never happen, but you know, at the same point, sure, you got to pay, we have to pay least, attention to it. We have, have to, to at least put it in our mind and acknowledge that it could. And so, with our law enforcement, we try to. Take Let, all right, so let's that. finish on a high note. Sure. sure. Yeah. If somebody yeah. wants to join. You know, your organization, Run Wild Missoula, or they want to enter the marathon, how do they find you? For both, they can always find us at runwildmissoula.org. Right. Um, certainly just for the marathon specific, missoulamarathon.org. Both Run Wild Missoula and the Missoula Marathon both ta- both have Facebook presence, Twitter presence, Instagram presence. We, we try to be present where we can. Um, you know, in today's age, you have to be there. Yeah, one more minute. Tony, last question. I have one question for you. <laughs> Favorite post run meal for me for you any oh for you. man yeah for me um, so this harkens back to the Boston Marathon I did in 2004 um, and I had an incredible post race meal of uh, lump crab cakes um, and Sam, Sam Adams beer that was probably about as good a meal as I've ever had now in general post race first thing you start with is beer right after yeah. that is pretty much all good right. so yeah <laughs> and my last question. <laughs> Yes. In 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 your age group at different times, what's the highest finish you ever had in a marathon? Just curious. Um, so the highest, no. so I, in 1997, I won the uh, um, Governor's Cup Marathon up in Helena. Wow. Um, outside of that, probably the large, the best finish I had was at the Cleveland Marathon in 2001. Um, I was eighth place overall, and I was the first American. Wow. So those were back in the days. Yeah, that's those are beyond me, but <laughs> I, I certainly enjoyed it when I was uh, um, young and competitive and uh, running fast still. That was very good. Tony, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Absolutely. And we yeah, look forward to uh, we look forward in a couple of weeks to see uh, to see the Missoula Marathon in its full glory. Yeah, two and a half four. Well, two weeks from today. Yeah, we'll two be weeks. two weeks from this morning. Um, when you're listening to this, we'll be about halfway through the day. <laughs> good. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Thanks, thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Tony. See you uh, next week. Take care. Thank you for listening to What Do You Know? I can't wait for the next show, Scott. I'm excited too, Arnie. If you'd like to suggest a guest, send me an email at scottrichman at townsquaremedia.com. We'll see you next week. And thanks for listening to News Talk KGVO, AM 1290, 1015 FM, and newstalkkgvo.com.